Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. Hello and welcome to the show. What is going on, everybody? This is episode number 29 of the How Awesome Is This podcast, where we watch ridiculous movies and we figure out on a scale of uh, awesomely bad or awesomely one, awesome. One to awesome, yeah. <laughs> and we watch The Mag featuring uh, Jason Statham and uh, and a whole cast of characters. I wasn't there for this one, but I've seen this movie and it's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> it's it's so ridiculous. It's so, and then oh, they have. I think they're trying to do sequels. I hope so. They I leave hope the they end do, open. I hope they do a Fast and Furious Meg <laughs> somehow, where they drive cars in and. Well, you know, the shark did have family at the end, right? It, 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 it was all about family. <laughs> uh, make sure you hit the like, hit the subscribe, leave a comment, get us back in the YouTube algorithm, gods. I know it's been a minute since we had a podcast out. But the Aunt Joseph for All album is done, and we just started on a new project. And I'm heading out on tour with Black Label Society, Anthrax, and Hatebreed. Get your tickets at anthrax.com. Don't believe the hype, folks. We're on the Detroit show, we're on the Philly show, and now we're also on the Dallas show. Okay, so go to anthrax.com for all your tickets and come see us. We start in Phoenix on July 26th. Today's episode is brought to you by Indie Merch Store. We're so happy that they are back on the attack, and they they love Carnifex just as much as we do. And Carnifex has announced the Dead in My Arms 15th anniversary tour and merch line. So go pick up redesigned hoodies, tees, flags, grinders, and so much more celebrating the band's first album. The band will headline the 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 tour in support of this in September and October featuring Splay, Oceano, Left to Suffer, and Crown Magnetar, who have played on the music show. I actually played all those bands on the Patreon music show. Head on over to IndieMerchStore.com. And check out the re-recording of Lie to My Face streaming everywhere. Just make sure you use code JASTA10 at IndieMerchStore.com. Also, you while know, you're at it, after today's show, if you like this podcast and you want to hear more of these movie podcasts, go to GasDigitalNetwork.com. Use the code JASTA when you subscribe. And make sure to access these. you got to hit bonus content. If you're on Safari and doesn't load, you just got to refresh it. You'll see it. But we get we give you a private RSS feed, which pops up. Uh, like I saw Nikki put it in one of his apps and it pops right up when we put a new episode up. So um, gasdigitalnetwork.com, use a promo code JASTA. Now, Brian, let, let's tell them about this um, Rock Auto because, you know, I need wipers and it's 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 a it's an old Ford van. They're not easy to find. Oh, yeah. I go Rock on Auto, rockauto.com. Need, boom, they have it. These other places I went to, the guy's looking at me crazy. They don't have it. This guy, this this site, they have it. It's Rock like the Auto Amazon Car- of car parts. Yes. It's a plethora. It's a, it's a cornucopia of auto-related products, not just parts, but all sorts of products. And You want some smell goods? You need new car smell? Psh, Rock Auto. Dude, I'm all you. about that new car smell action, and you should be too. Head on over to rockauto.com. No coupon code needed. We really appreciate the support from rockauto.com. Also, I got to say, if you've missed out on the Patreon, there this is the best time to, to sign up. Patreon.com slash Jasta. We're talking about the Pantera reunion. We're talking about the um, the new tracks from like Disturbed, Beartooth, Architects. We're, we're going over bands that want to get on Milwaukee Metal Fest. I mean, it, there's so much content over there. Patreon.com slash Josta. All right, let's uh, let's get to this podcast where we watch the Meg. You're gonna love it as much as we did. Now onto the show. How awesome, how awesome, how awesome is this What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the How Awesome Is This podcast. We got Evan on the ones and twos today. What's up, Evan? What's up, man? How you guys? Good, good. Happy to be back finally getting a getting a how awesome is this in before the end of the month here before I take off for Dallas to play the so what festival uh, Howard Jones will be joining us in a second we got Charlie Belmore back as always what's up Charlie hey man I hope you're not gonna be near any water in in, uh, in Texas because <laughs> I was watching a documentary last night and it seems pretty dangerous well 
Arlington is pretty landlocked. So I, I think. I, <laughs> well, well, with with this movie, that thing might get on land. <laughs> this thing just kept getting bigger. <laughs> yes, we. Charlie's referring to the Meg. It is the 2018 I, sci-fi action thriller horror. I mean, what would you call it? Yeah, that's probably right. I mean, it's it's weird because it feels like a horror movie, but then like Jason Statham's just kind of acting like, like you know, like cocky Jason Statham in every movie, and you're like, is this an is this an action movie? Like, because it feels like a weird like sci-fi like Deep Blue Sea thing, but then. <laughs> like he's acting so much like himself it's like like oh i'm like i'm waiting for more fun now like this is like you kind of get it it's great it's great and he's i used to think he was like the budget bruce willis now he's like the guy he's yeah. i think probably has more franchises and more uh credits i guess a longer period of time kicking ass right than bruce not that you know, I want to compare no disrespect to Bruce. I don't want to compare him to Bruce, but I used to think of him as the budget Bruce. No, I def, definitely early on. He had that kind of thing. You're just like, who is this guy? Like, he just this weird ball. I think he was in a Jackie. Ch I think he was in some Jackie Chan movies at some point, like really early. I'm not sure, but I've kind of have just a memory of him being like just one of the bad guys in one of those movies. And because he I felt like he did at some point have like a lot of karate skills or some sort of action skills. And at he, some he point was, he just kind of, what's that? He was in a Jackie Chan movie called ultimate fights. Oh, okay. Yes. Right. That I think that was one of his first credits, right. Mm -hmm. Or, or was the first one. Yeah, no, look up his, if you can check his filmography, but what I was going to say too, when I was alluding to uh, Bruce Willis was as far as bald guys go, I mean, he did, the Mount Rushmore of ball guys. It has to be Stone Cold, Statham, Bruce Willis, and then I was torn between the fourth. Does does Evan or Patrick you want to weigh in on <laughs> Patrick Stewart? Come on. Okay. Action movies. Just as far as just bald guys in general. Just balls. Oh, I mean, yeah. I mean this the the first captain of his starship. He was he was actually uh, Patrick Stewart. I believe was the first like bald. Like leading man on TV, I, th I believe at some point they said that, like when he got that show. Oh, wait, so I thought gotta, Kojak. Gotta I thought him. Kojak was the first ball leading man. I don't know. Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> Kojak. Big one. Kojak. I see. You know, I, I I can't. I'm sorry, Vin. I love you. I got my triple X platinum in Canada plaque. You know that. That's you see that little mini wall. That's like the. <laughs> that's that's the, the that's the Canadian wall. <laughs> <laughs> you 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 did it in proportional to the to America and Canada. <laughs> like you don't get on the regular wall. You there's because if you're only platinum in Canada. Actually, no, I think it's I think it's double platinum Canada, gold in uh in the states. But Howard is joining us right now, and we're we're talking about the Mount Rushmore of bald dudes, which I think stayed from. Uh, belongs on up there with Bruce Willis. I was going to say yeah. The Rock and Stone Cold. I know it's weird to have two wrestlers on the Mount Rushmore of bald dudes, but I, I have no problem with that. I really don't. Those two guys, no problem with that. And and listen, for everyone who's who's listening in today or watching on YouTube, and please make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell and whatnot. I, I was just waiting for Howard to join us to hit you with the dad jokes. Because <laughs> every week is Shark Week at my house, <laughs> <laughs> and we're we're starting early. I know, but, but but by the time this airs, it'll be June, and I know Shark Week usually is until what, like July or August. So, uh, we're starting early on this episode of the Getting Started. How awesome is this podcast? <laughs> You've been waiting to use that. <laughs> but for Shark Week, you know, we were, I say we're starting early. We were going to have to watch uh, Deep Blue Sea, maybe Deep Blue Sea 2, maybe nope. Deep Blue Sea 3. Stop it. <laughs> there, there's a third one. Stop, stop it right now. <laughs> there is. And Zeus almost scored the film. He like had the gig and then it, something fell through. You know, those. Who almost I, didn't know his, I didn't know his hat is like a shark spin. <laughs> <laughs> 
by the way, can anybody, before we talk about this, before we, <laughs> oh, dude, he, just his, he just bowed his head. He's just, no, <laughs> I was, I was going, I want to shout out everybody from Patreon, Patreon in a second, but I was going to sign on with a shark fin and I was like, I can't do it, but, um, we, we are going to get to our, our Mount Rushmore of shark movies. We're going to talk about this movie. Uh, the Meg t- on today's show. And, and I want to thank everybody joining us from Patreon before we get started. We got Seth Peters in the house. We got Chris Larice. We got Paul Scally. We got Samuel Angeli. We got Dallas Bolin, Andy Wilson, Ryan Williams, Matt Yankowskis, TJ Buggins, Matt Amerheim, Chris Shea, Mike Horgan, Jack Flanders, the pit commander, and Nick Fowler. We got a good Patreon crew here this morning, seeing yeah. as, <clears throat> you know, the, the yeah. sharks get everybody involved you, you know what i like about statham and i've seen this like mul- multiple barbecues over many many years it i feel i have a theory that some women are attracted to him but if you're a man and a woman says that they're not attracted to statham i've only <laughs> seen men get immediately mad at the women like <laughs> oh, you not be attracted to him like immediately and it's like Maybe you just want to fuck him, which is fine. But like, That's let's amazing. calm down. Like, That's amazing. And, and well, every time a girl says, "I don't know," I don't get that. You just see guys like, "What are you talking about?" You don't get it. <laughs> he never had that weird um, Seagal esque moment where there was a toupee or or plugs. He he was like, "Fuck it, I'm doing this gracefully." Maybe there's a check involved from Bic or from uh, Mach Three, or <laughs> I don't know. But I, but I have seen famous. Check. Well, I have seen famous ball dudes like Dana White, you know, selling uh, those that that razor thing. You know, that one that was like it was had razors on both sides, and I don't know why this has turned into a, a show about baldness all of a sudden because we are going to talk about. The Meg, the 2018 American science fiction action film directed by John Turtletop <laughs> with screenplay by uh, Dean Corgiaris. I hope I'm saying your name right. Dean, John Hover, Eric Hover, loosely based on the 1997 book Meg, a novel of deep terror by Steve Alton. The film stars Statham, who we we're just talking about, one of the greatest bald actors of all time. Lee Bing Bing, who is a lovely, I mean, she was so damn cute, this, this Lee Bing Bing. And if you dated someone in her, or we're married to someone named Lee Bing Bing. I mean, how fun is that? <laughs> oh, it's a, it's, it's an awesome name. Like it's, I, I said it all day yesterday. Me too. And I, I was everything I was doing. I would ring the doorbell, Bing Bing. I was doing every. I, was shooting, <laughs> me. I wouldn't even get through one date if she even considered. Uh, Rain Wilson also is in the film. Ruby Rose, who, um, it's, I mean, we I, listen. Ruby Rose is so thin in this film that I was like, there's no way she even eats bread. I'm sorry to comment about her. You know, that's, you're not supposed to do that in 2022. But I was like, damn, I really got to think about my eating habits. If she can maintain, I mean, this, and she's a badass at that weight, but she can't weigh more than like 90 pounds. What, what is she okay? Is she bigger Probably. now or something? I'm, I don't really know her stuff. I don't know, but I've been on TV and the camera adds 10 pounds. That I mean, looks how like do, her. do you just not ever? I mean, has she you can't eat a candy bar anyway? Anyways, I'm going to get a lot of hate. <laughs> You're going to get canceled. Winston, Winston Chow, Cliff, Cliff Curtis is also in the film. And, um, and, and yeah, so let's, let's, let's talk about the plot, right? Because a group of scientists, are uh, exploring the Mariana Trench, which I've watched a bunch of documentaries about. I don't know if you guys have, but sure. it, it's it's fascinating, right? Because it's like the lowest that point that anybody's ever tried to dive into. And even, I guess, at certain times, they haven't really even gotten that far down, right? Yeah, it's pretty much wet space. Uh, you're, it's unexplored. <laughs> Yeah, and if we're going to go by the hollow earth theory in King Kong versus Godzilla... Oh, wait, wait, no, no, we won't. No, please, please don't. <laughs> let's, we not, let, let, let's deal with one crazy movie at a time. <laughs> so, 
So the film starts with uh, Jonas Taylor, which is Statham's character. He, they they've encountered um, uh, some issues at the bottom of the trench, and they've they've basically it's forced him to abort this mission and abandon half his crew. And something was attacking. Obviously, it's this it's this shark, right, or one of these sharks. And there's this tragic incident that gets him dismissed. What do we know? Because I I saw this in the theater. And I've seen it before since, but do we ever know what the fuck his job is? <laughs> he's just a diver. He's, yeah. he's just, he's just like some expert secu- diver slash security. I, that it's a good question because this incident that starts the movie out basically earns him his dismissal and Which makes him I go love, into hiding in Thailand as a drunk or whatever. Like will <laughs> I, I like I, I'm going to I'm going to try to like not go too far ahead, but I love not once but twice in this movie does he save a boatload of people and then everybody that saved him are mad. <laughs> Happens all the time. He saves so many people. It's a freaking well, superhero. The- the doctor, what I didn't understand was that I thought the captain goes down with the ship. So the doctor Heller character, he's Heller sucks. <laughs> the theater. Like, how, how is that the dismissal? Like, there's giant like teeth chomping. <laughs> like, let's go. Yeah, yeah. I know it's like I know it's never leave your buddies behind or whatever the the thing is, but he had to go and he had to make the the decision. And if it was the captain, if Heller was the captain, I would get it right. The captain has to go down with the ship, which I thought maybe there was a different protocol for submarines, but they're at, they're in the bottom of the trench. This thing is attacking. I did like that. They showed really quickly um, the shark. And then they showed like the explosion, which kind of looked like it exploded the shark. Right. Yeah. Then, Nobody believes them because there's no evidence because it's all the way down there. And it's, you know, he's saying it was down. It was some sort of huge 70 foot plus creature or whatever. And they, I guess, move on with their lives and they have another expedition go down there. Of course, which I thought it was funny was it's Statham's ex-wife. Like he would want to go save her. But I, I love that they didn't mention it. Like the like they weren't like, oh, we can go get this guy because his ex-wife's down there. They just don't mention it at all. And no, like it was it was like when like it's like when you're like telling a story with a little kid and they're like, but like you're like, you're like, why wouldn't that be the reason we go get him? Come on, like that doctor right. was like, No, no, we can't get him. And that Mac guy wasn't like, but it's his wife, it's his ex-wife. No, nothing. I guess that was to suggest that. He was like, look, I'm never doing this again. I'm done. And she was like, well, I have to find this creature. That's what I got from it. Like, or or she was like, well, fuck you. You know how like when you break up with somebody, then all of a sudden they start doing the shit that you wanted to do during the relationship. Like, oh, what? Now now you're into bowling, bitch? I was fucking bowling every week. You didn't want to go. Sorry. It would have taken taken one minute to give a little more backstory with that. (laughs) That would have been nice. It would have been nice to figure that out. You know, uh, and then nice I like that they that just without having to think. Well, okay, maybe this happened. It, it, anyway, yeah. Go I ahead. also enjoy that they just basically don't talk for the rest of the movie. <laughs> like, nope. Yeah, it's like <laughs> they were married, and, and and it was like it was like she was an old member of one of my bands. We do not speak. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> why? I, hey, listen. Listen, I, if they just, were at, the, if they were at the bottom of the ocean in a submarine, I could see like I could I could plead with you and be like, look, Howard, we got to get Mike D out of there. We got to get, you know, whoever's <laughs> down. There. And you would go. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'd get talked into it. <laughs> even, right, well, even though I'd have to do it with with Heller, who sucks. <laughs> we'd be like, listen. <laughs> It's gonna worst it's, character ever. <laughs> hey everybody, today's episode is brought to you by indiemerchstore.com, your one-stop shop for all things metal. You know them, you love them. They support the Josta show. We want to support them. Head on over to indiemerchstore.com after the podcast today and you will see 
they have the new Carnifex line. It is banging, son. That shit is banging, son. You'll see they just announced that Dead in My Arms 15th anniversary tour. Makes so the me merch- feel old. Dude, 15 right? 15 years already, dude. All, all my favorite albums are like old now. They can all drive. It's fucked up. It's, it, but you know, the new recording, the new recording of Light of My Face sounds autumn, uh, awesome. They got Adam from Oceano on there and they're going out with them in September too. So it's, it's uh, Carnifex, Spite, Oceano, Left to Suffer, and Crown Magnetar. You can see all the tees, the grinders, the flags, and everything they have for the uh, redesigned stuff. It's, it looks killer. IndieMerchStore.com, use the promo code JOSTA10 and go listen to the new Light of My Face, uh, the re recording of it featuring Adam from Oceano. It's streaming everywhere now. You know, you know, we're all about that Carnifex action. IndieMerchStore.com, promo code JOSTA10. Now back to the show. Um, I like the fact that they established right away that Rain Wilson is like the douchey billionaire guy who's funding the project, but he's kind oh, of. And he- he plays it so great. Like kudos to him for just oh. work. Like you could tell they didn't give him a lot and he just crushed it. Oh yeah. It's just pretty sure he was ad living dialogue. It was just oh, the yeah. chatter and, and it worked. <laughs> it worked so well. <laughs> Everybody really did an amazing job keeping this believable for being such a ridiculous movie. I mean, they really, they really tried. And it's a lot of people in this movie. The cast is huge. And mm-hmm. although you don't really care so much about um, some of the people who get eaten by the shark, it's just enough, right? Like Heller, you knew that they were going to sacrifice his ass because you didn't really like Uh-oh. him. Oh, yeah. The, and Yeah, it had to happen. The, the, the fat bearded sidekick guy, you knew he was going to go. I like that they gave Homeboy from uh, from Heroes, the TV show, like they gave him kind of like a, a a good send off. He he sacrificed himself to say <laughs> hero from Heroes sacrificed himself. Like a hero. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. And the fact that, you know, his Statham's ex-wife goes down there and she stays, you know, employed by the douchey uh, billionaire character played by. uh Rain Wilson, you know, it's they're 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 I thought they were establishing like, okay, this isn't just about conservation or exploration. It is like about money, which is why he didn't tell anybody in China or Japan or Australia. So no one really knew that they were out there endangered by, you know, this this ginormous megalodon shark, right? What I love st- still, yeah, really is the, the wife or the ex-wife. All that happened in the beginning, and then after that, nothing but the occasional danger exclamation. Oh, my God, there's the shark! You know, the, she yeah, that was, was gone. She disappeared. Baffling. Well, and also, and she got injured really bad, right? Which nothing really came of that. I think that was just to up the tension or or or, or up the ante, but then... I tie it in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tie it in very easily. There, there was a lot of stuff that didn't make sense. He never so checked like, on her. <laughs> <laughs> no. She woman has a like, gut wound. She could have went septic. Nah, she's fine. <laughs> it was just like, listen, there's this other, you know, there's this other scientist on the ship, and she's pretty, and there's this other one with ridiculous short hair and you know, I don't know what's going on with her. So my my ex-wife's fine. And this is supposed to be five years later, right? So he's, he's off, you know, in Thailand doing his thing, renting out his boat. And staying jacked. (laughs) Of course. Yeah. For all the beers that he drinks, like what is he drinking? Michelob Ultra? I don't get it. How does he smell those abs? (laughs) We're, yeah, the, so we're showing riddled. his abs in the contract. Oh, I'm sure it was. Yeah. It, it, it's sort of like the rock doesn't lose a fight. He shows the abs. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. The Van Damme with the glutes. Abs. But what was besides, besides his wife being down there, what made him just completely turn on a dime and go, all right, you know what? It's the largest marine predator that's ever existed. My, I'm back in the game. <laughs> my my feeling was 
the story was supposed to be that he wanted to feel vindicated, but it f- it felt kind of hastily edited. So like that, they just kind of focused on the ex-wife because the the beginning would feel hastily. Like he was just on that submarine. There's no explanation of what the fuck is going on. There's no explanation of who he is. <laughs> yeah. And like, we're just there. So I think that was just kind of like, we just got to go, go, go. Like that was the one thing one of one of the great things about this movie is that you're like, holy shit, it's over. Like it's just so <laughs> fast. Yes. It, yeah, what, it is there? Hard. Are you saying we need a director's cut? Uh, no, I think oh. it's paced brilliantly because they as as for and one of I I did notice there is a touch tone. A lot of movies that we watch, multiple endings <laughs> because first shark dies. Oh shit! Another shark. That was great. That was a great twist because you're only like 35 minutes in, (laughs) and it's amazing. But then the shark goes away, and then you're like, "Oh, okay. Well, I guess what?" And and I was like, "Wait, it's not over, right?" And then I I paused it, and I was like, "Oh no, we have 40 minutes left. There are (laughs) things happening." And then that was just the baby shark. (laughs) You're not allowed to. I've had. I heard that literally. I was in the bathroom last night getting ready to take a shower and I heard that song for maybe 17 minutes straight. And I was going to just, I was just going to oh. slice, but luckily there was no razor. Yeah. Um, but uh, like, that's a thing. If we go, if you go back and think about it, a lot of the movies that we do have like, Three and a half endings. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, like, they were, well, maybe they were, it's. What if it's not done? <laughs> like it's like that. They're just in the script room rewriting it. Well, I was wondering. Oh, is this going to be a suicide mission for Statham, and he's just going to say fuck it and go down with the shark, or is it? You know, he's just going to confront his fears, risk his life, but be the hero at the end. You know, I I wasn't totally sure, and then also because we had texted about watching this movie because I sent you guys the Meg Two thing, right? Yeah. I was like, well, there's got to be a sequel with Statham if they're doing a Meg 2. But is that confirmed that he's in the Meg 2? I feel like he is. It did well. I think he's in it. I, I, I think I read something about it, but I don't remember for sure. But I think he's in it. Oh, okay. someone just said yes. Okay, yeah. Well, it would have been great if it was a suicide yeah. mission and not just a, a, a chance at redemption. Either one would have been fine. Like, I was... I was pretty satisfied with the ridiculous kills and, and I actually thought there was going to be some more creative ones. Like I, I, I thought I was like maybe misremembering this movie. Cause I've seen a lot of these silly shark movies, but the, the rain Wilson kill was funny. Cause it first bites the whale yeah. and then it like, and then it actually gets him. But what was the best uh, death by shark you think? I mean, my favorite death by shark was just on that beach at the end, but it just eviscerated because it's just so big. You can't just have one death. It's like the big yeah. deaths that are awesome. Yeah, I, I actually liked it grabbing the uh, the smaller shark that was hanging dead. I was like, such a nice touch. Yes, excellent. That that was the kill for me. Yeah, I, and that I, scene I, I crazy hard kill. in the movie theater for that. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> without, without a doubt, I was laughing. <laughs> That that all that green screen stuff they made it. Whoever the director of photography was or is um, was great. Like you could tell they were in, um, you know, the, they were on the lot wherever whatever studio produced this movie. I think it was MGM. Um, oh, you mean when Statham was in the middle of the ocean, aiming and yeah. shooting, and just <laughs> not shredding water? This <laughs> is like, yeah, we got to suspend belief here. <laughs> he has very strong legs, very strong legs. <laughs> with yeah. very little movement. <laughs> they they did a, they did a really good job with that, and I liked they included the the daughter. I think this was supposed to be one of those films where it was like not too scary but scary enough right because it was it pg-13 or was was it r 13 yeah yeah well it's just no blood that's all you know enlisting the help of a veteran deep sea diver slash beer drinker um (laughs) you know jason statham (laughs) 
And I, wasn't he a, like wasn't he a, a a swimmer or diver in in real life? Yes, I loved the fake Jason Statham Twitter account when it was still around, where everything was like he just got out of the pool. <laughs> like <every tweet. laughs> I think they deleted it, but it was hilarious while it lasted. Um, where you know, where's a a, a shark's favorite place to vacation? Finland. Oh. <laughs> oh, I got more where they're. I didn't want you guys to just sign off and leave me alone on the podcast with Evan. <laughs> you keep pumping those out. It, yeah. So in the when they get down there to save him, right? Hero sacrifices himself and they you know, they, they get out of there. The shark's following them. We realize that that's not even the biggest one. Um, I did think at some point, like, what if there were other, you know, creatures that were going to come out? Because remember when um, Lee Bing Bing's character goes down there and the squid gets her and they think it's the, mm-hmm. like yeah. that giant squid. I was like, oh, they could go. This universe could be insane. Like they could make this have like Godzilla type mm-hmm. monsters coming out. Well, that's the thing. He he's wrote multiple sequels. <laughs> I mean, yeah. there's multiple sequels to that book, and not to mention, I'd read the book back in the day and listened <laughs> to the audio book. So I'm like, get out! Oh, this will be fun to watch. Oh yeah, yeah. I did just because it was mindless entertainment, and so was the movie. <laughs> well, <laughs> was, yeah. I'm gonna have to check it out then because I I loved all that. Like when we after the tsunami, when they started, when National Geographic started posting all those pictures of the stuff that came up from the tsunami like that came oh that's from, fantastic yeah i mean that was insane it just goes to show there's so many species that we haven't even encountered yet and the heat from that volcanic eruption underneath the ocean is what sent them up right like they had those species of animals of sea animals had to get away from the the lava or, or the heat of the explosion at the bottom of the ocean and so i mean that whole angle I mean, I need to see, I need to see Statham trying to like plug up an underwater volcano while fighting off, you know, giant spider crabs. And I mean, they could just go wild with this franchise. Right. I'm surprised. They and he would do it, too. I, I love how he just put stuff on and just jumped into the water. He, he beat a megalodon in hand to hand combat. <laughs> what did I just see? <laughs> It's like, wait, I just flew a red eye across the country to watch this. <laughs> and he yeah, beat it. That's he, amazing. He, he won. Punched. He they went. Uh, I love like it went, it goes out of the ocean, and then he's just like <clears throat> and just punches <laughs> all the way into his brain. Wow. Dude. Yeah, he 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 has a great life. I mean, he really stayed them one at life, really. I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah. This is definitely Sharknado with more budget. Yes. Yeah. About about 150 times the budget. Yeah. Yeah. So much budget. Is this somebody who's like, I mean, whoever makes this, like the producers, they get together and like, okay, how much do we need? We need $100 million, or whatever, $80 million to make this movie. I mean, talk about a level of belief that you have in this project <laughs> yes. to throw you down that type of investment. It's like, this is money. This is money. Let's do it. I, I don't know. Can you yeah. imagine making that decision and then being wrong? No, thanks. Well, that, that happens all the time. That's, that's, that's why they're used to it. <laughs> I, yeah, but way, I think also maybe Lee Bing Bing has a huge following um, outside of America, too. So they, they yeah. I guess, had a yes. guaranteed... Um, and also, you know, Rain Wilson has a big following. And Statham has also an rem- international remember, following. This was the um, this was back when they had all those rules for China, so that's why they showed China so much in the movie. Because then that, uh, that, that it immediately that's, that's gets into China that way. Okay. We're, yeah, she'll do a wedding. It was yeah, it, it was wasn't remember was it? it wasn't in Singapore or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Remember for like five or six years, the finale of every single action movie, they somehow had to go to China for no reason. It's that's why. Cause that then if you were in China, you get to go, you get, they open it there and that's a lot of money. Yeah. That is big money. Okay. Yeah. So it also, um, this director, I didn't realize he did cool runnings. He did. I mean, this dude, he's nice. Turtle Tom. Wow. Turtle Tom is a is is the man. I mean, his his whole uh, <clears throat> filmography is is pretty fucking awesome. We should we should say that it's it's Masi Oka who plays the Toshi character. Although the hero from the hero was hilarious, Howard. It's also <laughs> kind of rude. <laughs> what? Well, he was a hero from Heroes, and he was a hero. <laughs> and what's funny is there was a quote in the office where Rain Wilson he said the same thing come to think of it he was like Did hero he? from heroes he's a real hero that's also true Bono. there you go well, office quote you know you know that Turtle Tob has a connection to Nick Cage he was the producer on National Treasure yep fantastic yeah so I I hope he signs on for the Meg too um I, I did thing, like there were there was no boring spots and the, it, there was always something happening that I uh, I loved that it wasn't it wasn't just like oh this is dragging it it really rolled yeah it was paced perfectly yeah yeah and and the the all the effects with the shark were awesome when it bit, when it attacked the dead shark on the boat the, those effects were awesome. Yeah. Um, when they blew up the the whale, that was hilarious, and the dude's covered in fucking whale blubber. Um, <laughs> I did. Did you, were were you guys thinking that the shark was going to come up and and eat a helicopter out of the air? Yes, I was too. hoping for that. I really was hoping for but, it. I was like this needs a Fast and Furious moment. Do it. Yes, which they absolutely should combine um universes and and absolutely for Fast Eleven. I know we spoke about this privately, but. We need to tell the world and we need to think it into existence. Fast 11, the Meg mashup, combine the universes, right? You got Ruby Rose, you got Statham. <laughs> Let's do this. I, I, I still, you know who I still... else? They, and you know who they should have do the soundtrack? Oh, oh God. Vince Gill. <laughs> 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 All right, so <laughs> oh my god, and it even took me a second. I was like, What? Oh, uh. <laughs> so, wow. so before we get out of here, and uh, I want to go to the chat and I want to thank um, everybody from Patreon for, for joining us. We are going to have like a real deal shark week. How awesome is this podcast? I I should say we're not going to watch Jaws, but I I've never seen Sharknado. Does anyone have Neither. suggestions? I've seen The Shallows. I've seen um, I've what, seen Sharknado. <laughs> I've, I've seen none of them. It, do we need to watch Sharknado for how awesome is this for Shark Week? It's definitely I awesome. <laughs> all right we're going to the chat right now dallas boland says i can't believe charlie likes this so much and yet hated the sonic so hard because i saw both movies <laughs> tj buggin says if you can make it through sharknado it's a great one santa jaws could be year round according to matt yankowskis santa I jaws i saw the trailer i was like no fucking way there's a Santa Joss. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> the picture is amazing, but beyond that, it's horrible. What's the picture? <laughs> it's just like it's just the shot. It's just the you know the, the shark fin with a hat on it. Oh boy! <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> We're gonna be watching some really weird things. <laughs> yeah. For Shark Week, I think we need to. If it on the yeah, I mean, I, I'm cool with it. The Meg is definitely got to be on Mount Rushmore of shark movies. No, yeah, I can give it that. Yeah. 
All right. It, because... it was, it was um, what was that movie? How do you describe what we just watched? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it was entertaining and absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> so I don't know what to call this movie. Hilarious. No. Uh, I mean, they did refer to it as the devil. And when I looked up other shark movies, I did notice there's a movie called Shark Exorcist, which I was like, we might have to watch this. Um, that, there's wow. <laughs> there's also a movie with the beautiful and lovely and talented Halle Berry. And it's called Dark Tide. I was like, wait, how did we miss this? Dark Tide? Yes. Do we need to watch the trailer for Dark Tide just so I can see Holly Berry in a bikini? I mean, I know, you know, Charlie, I think, used to have a Mr. Skin subscription, so he's, he's already <laughs> seen this stuff. I didn't know someone that actually guy? had that. Yeah, I remember it, <laughs> but I didn't know someone actually had, <laughs> actually had that. That's amazing. <laughs> I always felt bad for that guy. I'm like, just buy a porno mag. Like, what's the, what's the issue here? Like, why are you doing, like, why is he archiving when, when any chick shows her boobs in the movies it's really weird it's definitely a little odd <laughs> evan do we yeah, want to see the trailer for dark tide can you show yeah, us i got I, it up right now it's co-starring yeah. <laughs> oliver martinez who i don't know i feel like holly berry should have had a better co-star is it hallie or holly i think it's hallie <laughs> My father once told me to be careful of the things you love most in the world. Because if you're not careful, that very thing can also destroy you. Oh, she's a shark attack survivor. They're going to take your boat. I have a job offer. A lot of money. What can I do for you? I'm willing to offer you 100,000 euros to put me in the water with a great white shark outside the cage. I've spent 10 years. It's taken me that long to be able to get outside of the cage. You're going to show us how it's done. Take his offer. Like, is that easy? Why are you freaking out? Because you told him he could do something that I wasn't even sure I could do. Swimming with sharks, for me, that is the ultimate. It's putting your courage on the line, right? Let's do it. Just stock footage. <laughs> Director of Blue Crush <laughs> and Into the Blue. Where Whoa, you directed two yeah. movies of Blue in the title? <laughs> That's wild. 20 footers. Be safe out there. I'm sure about this. Let's give him his money's worth. Let's do it. Academy Award winner Halle Berry. Olivier Martinez. Who's he? Who's that? Hold. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Your. Breath. All right, we're not watching this. <laughs> if, it, if the trailer feels like two hours. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dude, there's a lot of shark movies. I didn't even know. Like, did anyone see Shark Night 3D? Shark Night 3D? That must mean that there were prequels to that. Oh, if I, I think Jaws, know, Open Jamie Water, Oliver the Meg. Was? Who? Uh, Halle Berry's husband. <laughs> no. 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 Oh, that's shame amazing. On, shame on you, Halle Berry. <laughs> I, I think I can say that's a horrible idea. <laughs> Dude. You know, wow. And I think that's why that movie sort of drifted into obscurity. I don't think I don't think I would have ever known about that movie unless it hadn't just got played right now. <laughs> you know, Howard, when you, in the beginning we were waiting for you to sign on, and I totally spaced as soon as you were going to sign on. I was going to say, "I'm here with my chums." <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, they should have got Chum Lee in this movie and killed his ass like quick. <laughs> Um, <laughs> there, ghost shark what about ghost shark can we watch ghost that trailer shark. before we go yep. oh my gosh ghost, ghost shark because shark. because on the mount rushmore shark movies what? i'm gonna say open water jaws deep blue sea and the meg does anybody dispute this and, and think that 
I mean, I like the shallows. I I thought that was pretty good. And and Blake Lively. I mean, I could just watch her just whatever. Yep. You said doing ghost anything. shark. Just yeah, is it, you have the trailer for it, it looks, shark. <laughs> this one looks really interesting. <laughs> All right, ghost shark. Okay, we're we're off to a good start already. That's both. What the hell is he? <laughs> Oh, this is gonna be like piranha. Seriously? What the hell? Oh, oh my no. god. What? <laughs> you can't oh, this, is, oh, this looks amazing. Deck of a boat. Ghost it goes in a pool. We got the turkey. What? I don't have time to <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Maybe all we gotta do is stay dry and it'll leave us alone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, we're watching Ghost Shark. For sure. <laughs> all we need is the will to live, and that thing is coming after us. Oh my god. We brought this horror into our world. You get to send it back. <laughs> oh my god. Go shark. Is that oh we're doing god. that for Shark Week? Oh what, what? what are you doing? <laughs> I, I expected to see my credits roll in there because that was wild. <laughs> <laughs> Do Deep Blue Sea. Dallas Bowen says Deep Blue Sea is the only really good modern shark movie. I mean, <laughs> he and, said, and he really said good. fight me. <laughs> it, I, I thoroughly enjoyed Deep Blue Sea. I think I saw it in the theaters twice. The effects don't hold up. <laughs> no. The Wait, CGI. What about the, what about the statement you said? You saw it in the theaters twice? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> How bored were you? <laughs> it was what, was on, what was going on in your life? <laughs> it was fantastic. <laughs> I, I I hate myself. Like just oh, you know. God. It, uh, for everybody who writes me hate mail about this episode, just know you can never hate me as much as I hate myself. For <laughs> um, <laughs> what are you in the cure now? <laughs> <laughs> which, which which Jaws is the best? Like the first uh, one. It, that the other ones really are any of the other ones up there with the first one? And no. did you see? I don't. I barely remember the other ones. Yeah, I really don't either. I remember, I remember uh, forty-seven meters down. That one was pretty good. Do you remember that one? Yeah. Open okay. water was good because it was like doom. I mean, it was just doom and gloom. You just go, oh, what the fuck? Yeah, but ghost shark. <laughs> <laughs> it was the color of blueberry. What was going on in that? Dude. <laughs> That was <laughs> what else what else is there? I mean, I, I think I think the shark movies were put on pause really for a lot of the 80s and 90s, you know, or at least from since the last Jaws came out and then until Deep Blue Sea, there wasn't really any standouts yeah. that I remember. Yeah. yeah. I, I I don't remember. <laughs> I I feel like we kind of might have to do shark me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know I, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen any of them, and it's gonna be outrageous. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to do it. I think I think between Ghost Shark, Sharknado, and, <laughs> I mean, maybe we add this one in Hammerhead Shark Frenzy. Evan, you want to pull up that <laughs> trailer? What it's is super right now? <laughs> or no? How's this one? What about Shark Man? Shark Man. Yeah, can we pull up Shark Man the trailer? Maybe that's 
please for sure. let we, there be a transformation. Please let uh, us actually see him change into one. Shark Man. I wanted to watch Dark Man. Now we're we went from Dark Man to Shark. <laughs> Dark Man. <laughs> That's right. We did talk about Dark Man. <laughs> All right, here we go. Shark Man, the official trailer. Just a floating arm. Oh, wow. Montez, subject number A415, B4 is ready, Doctor. How long have you been in touch with King? Dr. King left out some of the key components of the formula, but if this is what I think it is, then King may have very well solved the stem cell riddle and the possibility. Oh, so it's so it's not like a diver Did you know sharks who turns into a shark. He's got some sort of stem cell muscle. Give you future of the human race. I created the plan. What? This meeting is over. Wait, what is this? What? They're being are they being hunted by Shark Man? Dude, our boy William um They're trying to get the creature to reproduce. <laughs> God, we have another one to watch. I mean, Shark Man. <laughs> oh my gosh. Is it going to commit sexual shark? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Bill F William Forsythe. I mean, he, we we might have to watch this just based on him alone. I mean, he was in he was in Stone Cold. True. I have no idea what's happening in that movie. <laughs> what? <laughs> Shark man. That creature, the the head and oh I um Oh god. Oh the All right, so we have to make. <laughs> So what's it gonna be? Is it gonna be Shark Man, Shark Nato, or Ghost Shark, or all three for Shark Week this July? Oh my gosh, that's so much time. That's, that's <laughs> that you'll so... never get back. Oh man. That's at least a couple IQ points with each movie. <laughs> yeah, I mean <sighs> Hey, you know what? Shark week. <laughs> it is what it is. This is what we this is what we do for the people. <laughs> <laughs> Well, on a scale of one to ten, uh, uh, ten being the most awesome, what, what, what will you give the mag? Hmm, I'm gonna give it a, I'm gonna give it a, I'm gonna give it a seven. Outrageous! Wow. Seven, I loved yeah. it because it's ridiculous, and but it's so entertaining, but so ridiculous. Seven, Charlie? seven, five, seven, five. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to give it a seven, too. Wow. I, I, I enjoyed it. It was a nice reprieve from all the crappy stuff that's going on in the world. I watched it yeah. start to finish. No issues. I I laughed. It was fun. Yeah, and, and it's nice to see a, an, an animal hold a grudge like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, you're in my space. I'm just going to hunt you now, even though... You're nothing close to what I naturally eat. And coming out there, you're like, oh, I, do this. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> Made no sense. Absolutely loved it. <laughs> hey, everybody. Today's episode is brought to you by rockauto.com. They have it all over there, all your auto parts needs. No standing in line at the store. No talking to someone who doesn't know their ass from their elbow when it comes to auto parts and they just got this gig because they need a job no you want someone that loves auto parts as much as you for all you gearheads you motorheads out there rockauto.com is the place you want to shop they have tools they have universal parts they have a search where you could search the part number they can show you in prices in different freaking currencies you speak french they got you dog you speak deutsch german they got you dog espanol 
Si, senor, they got you. RockAuto.com after the podcast today. Get yourself whatever you need for your ride, okay? This is better than all those other auto parts stores. RockAuto.com. No promo code needed. All the parts your car will ever need. RockAuto.com. Now back to the show. Well, we got a lot of movies to choose from for Shark Week. And um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the chat here. And uh, Dallas Mullen says, didn't James Cameron do Piranha? Actually, yeah, I think he did. He did Piranha 3D. 3D. Yeah. <laughs> I watched that in Europe a lot because it's <laughs> so bad. <laughs> that that one was is... a tour movie. That was a tour movie a lot. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, he also said, uh, Corey Taylor was, wasn't Corey Taylor in Sharknado. I thought D wasn't D in a Sharknado too. I don't know. I know yeah. the dude from Beverly Hills, 90210. Yeah. That was like That's, <laughs> we got to do it for him. Wait, how do you pronounce it? I think it's Ian. Oh, yeah, so he's Ian difficult. Zirin. He's difficult. Yeah, it's spelled so. Ian. <laughs> But like, is that just difficult parents or the making the kids life difficult? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, what? Like, why? <laughs> I don't know. It's, they could have just named him Skyler or something. <laughs> well, if I ever have another child, I might have to name him Statham <laughs> after. Uh, after the and great he, Jason. And he can never wear a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So where does this rank on, on the top Jason Statham movies, you think? Mm. Under Cranks. Yeah. It's not as good as the Cranks. Oh, and the first Transporter is great. Yes. Oh, the Transporter. That was a good one. I, I, I would say the top... Out of all the Jason Statham movies, I would say the top. It's it's in my top five. Um, but I, you know, Transporter Two was good too. I liked the Transporters. I liked Revolver. That one was good. I liked um, the Cranks are really good. Did you ever see the 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 medieval one that he was in? What was that one called? Did you ever see that? I did. No. I don't remember what it was called. It's like a dungeon siege or something. I yeah. Oh, Are we going to get Hobbs and Shaw too? Yeah, <laughs> Hobbs and Shaw. The only Hobbs and Shaw I want to see is Shaw from Alien. Bring her back, right? And then <coughs> Hobbs from... No, I don't know. What about Death Race? <laughs> that was good. Oh, yes. yeah. I forgot about that one. Dude, you know what? Jason Statham movies are like great for the flight when you don't, when you just, when you're on the long flight, like across the Atlantic, or if you're going to the South Pacific, like they always have the Jason Statham movies. I remember watching Killer Elite. I remember The Mechanic. Um, Mechanic was there great. Was a, I like that. Right? That, that, there was another one. I think it was called Safe. Do you remember that one? Sounds familiar. It, Sounds he was familiar. like, yep, yep, I saw it. Yep. It it had like everything was in it, right? It had like the Russian mob, it had like the corrupt cops. Um and then there was another one I think it was like basically the same movie. I mean, he does a lot of the sort of same Z movie, you remember Homefront? Yep. Yeah. Oh, Wrath like of I said, Man I was a, good. I watched a bunch of those on tour. Yeah. He's 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 got a great filmography. Wrath of Man, shout out to Samuel Angeli in the chat. That one was good. I watched that was probably the, the, one of the last flights back from the West Coast. I like Howard just did like before the pandemic. I think I watched that, um, you know, on the red eye from L.A. to, to JFK. And then I think I don't know if I saw Mechanic Resurrection, but I want to see that. I don't I didn't see that. I, I don't even know if I knew that existed. I know he has a movie coming he, out called. He's in it. He's in Mechanic Resurrection. I think so. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's from 2016. Bishop's most formidable foe kidnaps the love of his life in order to make him complete three impossible assassinations and make them look like accidents. Well, yeah. I mean, that's what. That's what he does, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
Wrath of Man, though, that was good. That one was good. Um, I don't know. I didn't. I never saw Redemption. I never saw Parker. I'm looking on his Expendables. Parker was yeah, good. I feel like I saw Parker. Yeah. Man, we should watch. We should watch the first death race. How many death races are there? <clears throat> the oh guy, no, are we going on Statham now? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 we don't. We don't have. We don't. Have. There's four. Wow. wow. But but Statham's not in them all, is he? Mm. I know he's in one of them at least. What's this war from 2007? Jet Li and Statham? Yeah. What? How did I? Oh, they've got to be. They've got to be kicking the crap out of each other. <laughs> how, how did I miss that? Wow, he's in Collateral with Tom Cruise. He's in Collateral. What? Oh, I don't he remember like him. A, he must be have like a bit villain part in that. Yeah, I think it's Maybe, a little thing. Evan, can you see? Can you just search? Jason Statham, Tom Cruise fight, or do we get to see them fighting? Can you see if that's on YouTube, yeah. like a clip? Did he get thrown out the window or something like that? Or is he one also, of the guys that uh, Tom killed? Ho- I hope so, because that'd be great. What about the Italian job? Is he in that? That says he says yes. That? Love that movie. The movie's so fantastic. He's a villain. Is he a villain in the Italian job? No, he's a good guy. Lock, stock, bad and two guys. smoking Edward barrels. Norman's bad guy. Yep, good movie too. Not yeah. finding anything on that. Damn it. Wait, what's turn it up? Ja Rule. Wait, wait, wait hold on. Whoa. <laughs> ja Rule and Jason Statham. We have all right. I know we gotta go, but let's uh. just watch that trailer, please. Ja Rule. <laughs> wait, pros from the Fugees? Why? Jason Statham. Why? Evan. <laughs> Let us watch this trailer before we go. I know we got to go. Turn it up. Turn it up from 2000. Turn it up film. This is unbelievable. Right. How did I not know this existed? There's two this of them. From- One of them's. I think we're going to find out in a second. <laughs> Turn it up is an explosive contemporary drama. There's this one that's 30 seconds long, and then this one that's a minute long. So Yeah, do the minute one at the top. There you go. This looks amazing already. We're watching Turn It Up, oh, starring of New York. Ja Rule. We in this together forever. Where music means money. I know you want to be a rap star. So does every other kid in the hood. Money means respect. We're talking about making your own album. We ain't got that kind of money. <laughs> we do now. <laughs> means power. Now they're caught in a game between love and loyalty. I want my baby to have a real man, not some thug who's running the streets. It's gonna be legitimate. You always talk about how you want to be legitimate. You want anything in this world, you gotta take it. Between the score of a lifetime, we in this together till the end. And the fight to survive. Yay! Oh boy. <laughs> Cross. Ja Rule. Turn it up. Damn, they didn't even give Statham any love in the, like they sure didn't. <laughs> I don't know, but suddenly I want to listen to No Diggity. <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> they told Statham they're like, fall back, fool. You're not in the trailer. You're not even getting billing on a DVD. That's crazy. Can't watch that, right? <laughs> that might have been like, you know, that might have been one of those, like, you just show up for a couple days, you get a paper bag full of money to be in the movie. I mean, I can't really, I, I can't really knock it, right? I mean, and Ja Rule has had some hit films, hasn't he? I mean, I know he's... And festivals. <laughs> Is Turn It Up the Fire Festival of Films? <laughs> <laughs> He's in Scary Movie 3. What about Ghosts of Mars? Statham was in that with Ice Cube, Pam Greer, and Natasha, and Natasha Henstridge. Whatever happened to her? Don't know. And it's directed by John Carpenter. How did I miss this? What? Ghosts of Mars. I, 
heard of it, but I, I definitely didn't watch it. All right, let one more trailer. Sorry, guys, and then I'll let you go. There's just <laughs> one more. Go some right. Mars. This could be. It's not for Shark Week, but it, it, this could be. Maybe we we pull this out for Halloween time. And I love John Carpenter. Oh, I've seen this. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> This is one of those that made quietly made like hundreds of millions, right? And no, and I didn't see it. Get out of there! What are we watching? I don't know. It's yeah. like the same special effects pass, like package as uh, some of Arnold's old movies. <laughs> yeah, or like Escape from LA. But here, a million miles from home. Hello? Anybody <laughs> here? Drop your weapon. I ain't going back. <laughs> there are nothing. nothing is what it seems. We got a situation ahead. Everybody in the mod's gonna inside. What the hell is going on out there? Whatever used to live here, we woke it up. It takes us. I'm talking about a kind of possession. Something's kicking out there. We need us, and we need you. Did the crystal method supply us with the soundtrack? <laughs> hey, that Fight Club soundtrack was dope. <laughs> so are they fighting zombies on Mars? Like, what is it? Whoa, there's the ghost. John Carpenter's Ghosts of Mars. Oh, I need to see this. Damn, girl. I like you already. As he punches her in the face. <laughs> <laughs> no. What happened to Natasha Henstridge? I don't know. Where is she now? Just, all right, and then we'll go. Where? <laughs> Evan, Natasha Henstridge 2022 photo. I need to see it. Not and then awesome. thank you everybody from Patreon. We'll be back on uh I got uh Morgan from Seven Dust on Tuesday. So join us. I think uh the, I've already posted it on Patreon and uh, I'll post the link when uh when Evan sends it. <laughs> Natasha Henstridge, here we go. Oh yeah. I I feel a comeback for Natasha. Where, where she did she leave the business? Don't know. It doesn't look like it. She, what what was that movie? Where what was the sci fi movie she was in? Splice. The uh, species. was it species? Yeah, species. Yeah. Species. Yeah. That she was. She yeah, was wasn't she, Adrian, was it Adrian Brody in that or something? Like, no, no, no. I'm thinking of no. That's Splice. That's Splice. yeah. There we go. Yeah, you're right. All right. Well, thanks, Evan. Thanks everybody from Patreon. Keep it, uh, keep it here for uh, Shark Week. We'll let you know. Oh boy! <laughs> if I'm making the executive de decision, I'm saying I think I gotta go with Shark Man, strictly based off <laughs> William Forsythe, because I've met him and he's cool. Like when we when we edited uh, Live Dominance, he was in there editing one of his movies. Awesome. Yeah, he was in the editing bay or whatever the editing suite. Um. But and right. he's in Stone Cold. I, I know Shark Man is, I'm going to hate myself. <sighs> yeah. It's gonna be a... Or Ghost Shark. I don't think I can do Ghost Shark, dude. It looks amazing. <laughs> <laughs> when, when this comes out for the general public, we'll see what they say. Because then we have like another, you know, three, four yeah. weeks after this comes out until Shark Week. And we got to go hard for Shark Week. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Shark, man. Go shark. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This has been that another episode good. of the How Jawsome Is This uh, podcast. <laughs> and uh, like, subscribe, hit the bell, and we'll be back for, for very soon. Bye bye. Bye. Later, y'all. Hope you enjoyed today's show where we watched The Meg with Howard, Charlie, Evan, and myself. 
It's uh, Brian and I here giving you a little outro, letting you know where to go in case you want more of these shows. You go to gasdigitalnetwork.com, use the promo code JASTA, sign up, and uh, you'll get you'll see all these shows under the bonus content page. And sign and up want- now before the price goes up. Yes. Get in there while the going is good. Yeah, till the end of the month. Got to the end of the month, okay? Don't fuck around. Fuck around, lay around. Fuck around and find out. And if you right. want to find out about Patreon, go to patreon.com slash So You'll see a ton of bonus content there. And then if you need some auto parts, support our sponsors, rockauto.com. They'll get you like, you want a screen to watch these movies in your car? They'll get you the screen to put in the back of the fucking seat. Like some of those uh, Pimp My Ride, like entertainment systems where you'd hit yeah. a button and your whole car would just turn into a movie theater. Yeah, your trunk, just fucking a, a screen comes down. They got it all. RockAuto.com, no code needed. But hey, if you want to tell them that you heard about them on the Josta Show or on the How Awesome Is This podcast, that's great too. We're not mad about it. Also, uh, MartyrStore.net, M-A-R-T-Y-R-S-T-O-R-E.net. If you want podcast merch, if you want Hatebreed merch, Crowbar merch, Josta merch, Kingdom of Sorrow, Corpse Grinder, shit, we got it all. MartyrStore.net, the link is always in the show notes. And come see me on tour with Hatebreed. We're opening for Black Label Society and Anthrax. Uh, Orlando just released another 100 tickets. Phoenix has about 75 tickets left if you want to come out on Tuesday. Also, Hollywood is is nearing a sellout as well. Go to anthrax.com for all the dates. Anthrax is 40th anniversary. It's going to be a blast. Anthrax, Black Label Society, Hate Breed. And if you want VIPs, martyrstore.net is the place to go as well. All right, everybody. Have a great week. We're going to finally get out that uh, Barney from Napalm Death episode now that we've... Um, the, the cats the out of the bag fest stuff yeah yeah the cats out of the bag about milwaukee metal fest so we can get that barney episode out for you right away all right thanks everybody have a good one we'll be back with another episode of how awesome is this podcast where we watch the movie r r r triple r so good dude so good uh, destroys marvel movies like literally destroys like crazy. embarrasses star wars <laughs> all those scenes you'll, you'll see we'll get that out next week all right everybody thanks bye bye Produced by Brian McKay. Executive producers Jake Olszewski, Ben Lee, AJ Lewis, Garrett Keeping, Dan Smith, Nick Torito, JJ Hernandez, Joe Bartovic, Jason Jarvis, Chris Larice, Alex Smolin, Todd McKee, John Blewett, Richard Miller, Kyle Marg, Nate Leffingwell, Morgan Costner, Mark Tag, Zapagor Waikato. Niall Scollard, Kathy D'Ambrosio, Justin Steven, Jack Flanders, the Pit Commander, Andy Wilson, Jeffrey Kuhn, Kimo Humalamaki, Jonathan Metis, Brandon Cooper, Matthew Jankowskis, Jamie Kutcher, Ryan Undercoffler, Matt West, Ryan Maurice, Chad Green, Dallas Hendricks, Jacob Arensberg, Kenneth Moore, Kona Butterflies, Stephen Helm, Richard McIntosh, Jeff Stevenson, Ryan Williams, Larry Tooley, Dallas Bolin, Ryan St, Nathan Rex Madrid, Cameron Hendricks, Scandalous Official, Joe Motson, Let's Talk Resident Evil, Andrew Chase, Guy on the Couch, Chris Winchester, Antonio Reyes, Joe Otson, Dustin Stone, Lee Walker, Ryan Levson, John Hankis, Robert Bushaw, Troy Seal, Mark Horror Armenta, Jay Liberston, Nick Fowler, Mike Horgan, Emma Horgan, Arna Rock, Patrick King, Oscar Brummett, Stacy Steinecke, Fernando Somoza, Patrick O'Brien, Dominique Zimmer, Ryan Sanders, 